Snitch Journal, The Shadow Moses Incident. Snake's Journal, November 5th, 2005. My old commander, Colonel Campbell, tracked me down in Alaska. He said he had a mission for me. I told him I needed to mush my dogs before I went anywhere. He gave me a weird look and told me to get a girlfriend. Cold, Colonel. Real cold. The Colonel brought in a civilian doctor, Naomi Hunter. She brought me into her office, demanded that I strip completely naked, then jab me with a bunch of needles. I haven't seen this kind of kink since I was stationed in Thailand. At least it was free this time. My mission is to infiltrate a base containing a lot of nuclear weapons and destroy whatever platform they're planning to use to launch them. The base is located all of two miles north of my house, so if the U.S. decides to just nuke the base, I'll be cooked. Convenient. Turns out the new leader of Foxhound looks just like me. He even stole my code name, Snake. I wonder if his Schwartz is as big as mine. I infiltrated the base, Shadow Moses, after getting pumped full of enough lead to use my Johnson as a pencil. Colonel said age hasn't slowed me down one bit. At the five pounds of slugs embedded in my torso will. I made my way into the holding cells where the DARPA chief is being held. There was a woman in the cell next door. She was doing crunches in her tank top. It's 45 degrees in here. She could probably cut the lock off the door with her nipples at this point. In fact, I think that's how she escaped. I reached the DARPA chief, Donald Anderson, and he confirmed my worst fears. The enemy's constructed another metal gear. Or still, it's not just some lame computer for me to blow up this time. It's an actual mech. Uh, I feel asleep. I offered to break Anderson out of his cell. He responded by shitting his pants and dying right in front of me. Does my cologne smell that bad? The woman from the cell got the drop on me as I was leaving. I admonished her for blanching in the face of the enemy. She responded by murdering three men in about two seconds. I knew my motivational skills were improving. More later, I have a can of freeze-dried meatloaf calling my name. Next journal, part two. I made my way into the armory below the tank hangar, where the arms tech president Kenneth Banker is being held. The enemy built a series of bottomless pits into the flooring, ensuring that some distracted jackass would fall to their doom if they paused long enough to make an innocuous point. Turns out that jackass was me. I found Baker surrounded by a tangled webbing of cables connected to C4. Doc Holliday appeared from behind a nearby pillar and decided to show off his gun twirling skills. I could've just shot him, but my favorite Olympic event is rhythmic gymnastics. I was hoping he'd finish with a pretty ribbon dance. A gunfight ensued. Shocking, I know. Just before I could ice the bastard, a ninja showed up and lopped his arm clean off. Round of applause for Ocelot. He held his own before things got out of hand. Maybe I'm just grasping at straws, but the ninja's hand-to-hand -hand skills were also pretty impressive. Ocelot's plan would have worked if his reach didn't exceed his grasp. That's enough, Snake. Sorry, Colonel. Baker is in pretty rough shape. He gave me a key to the level two doors on the base, directed me to find his project lead, Hal Emmerich, and then coughed a big clot of blood directly onto my face. Hope Naomi's shots included a TB vaccine. 
I contacted the Colonel's niece, Meryl, after checking the back of my package for 30 minutes. Still looking good. She revealed that she had the key necessary to disarm the metal gear. When I pressed her on how she had the key from the guards, she straight up said she hid it inside her No words. I have no words. A man identifying himself as Deep Throat called to warn me about some hidden Claymore mines. He said he was one of my fans. Guess someone found out I moonlight as a young adult fiction writer. Be sure to pick up your copy of Twilight of the Divergent Maze Running Games. The hero is a 90 pound teenage girl with unique powers, and she's also caught in a love quadrangle. I was stopped in the canyon pass by an absolute unit named Vulcan Raven. He told me that snakes don't belong in Alaska. I tried to explain that garter snakes have been spotted in the southeast parts of the state, but Raven called me a nerd and shot a take round at me, just saying. Before I could enter the nuke warehouse, Colonel called to warn me not to use any weapons inside, and Naomi said I couldn't even if I wanted to, because the nanomachines in my blood would stop me. I asked what else the nanomachines could make me do. Naomi typed something, and I proceeded to cluck like a chicken a few times. Then I laid an egg. Ow! I'm just outside of Dr. Emmerich's office. A ninja is eviscerating a squad of soldiers inside. I could try to stop him, but even I have to admit this shit's cool. Next journal, part three. The ninja that attacked me near the armory found his way to Dr. Emmerich's lab. He made an unnecessary show of force to the unarmed scientist who wet his pants in response. Either the scientist is secretly making snuff films or this ninja has a pee fetish. I'm betting on pee. I intervened and the ninja challenged me to a fight. He asked me to make him feel alive again. So I punched him a few times. Then he told me to hurt him more. So the ninja is into piss play and he likes rough stuff. I'm betting he has a ball gag hidden somewhere on his robo key. Turns out the ninja was an old friend from Foxhound. Gray Fox. This is the same guy who wanted to fist fight me in a minefield. Certainly explains the sadomasochism. Still working on the P angle. Maybe it charges his batteries? I convinced the scientist, who insisted on being called Otacon, to help me destroy his mech. He thanked me by showing me his awesome, one of a kind, completely detachable stealth camo unit and ran off with it. Hmm, I know I should have shot him when I had the chance. Damn it. Meryl was hanging out in level B1 of the nuke building, so I headed over there to check in. She yelled at me for walking into the ladies' room. I was going to apologize, but look at this place! Private vanity stalls? Unsmashed mirrors? Pretty floor wallpaper? <gasps> Is that a bidet? <laughs> Sorry about that. We headed for the commander's room, which connects to the communication towers where Rex is being stored. Meryl started having an acid trip or something and came on to me. I would have stopped her and reminded her of her mission, but she squeezed my gun. It's been ten long years since anyone squeezed my gun. Ten. Long. Years. Turns out a heroin addict in a gimp suit was mentally manipulating her. This Psycho Mantis character told me to put my controller down so I could vibrate it. A video game controller appeared in my hand somehow, so I panicked and threw it away. When the controller hit the ground, I spun in a circle, crouched, made two rations, set a claymore at my feet, and crawled into the wall for 30 seconds. Don't throw the controller again. Got it. After 10 minutes of frankly confusing combat, I defeated Mantis. As he shared his deathbed confession, I decided to unmask him. But stared back was horrifying. A pale, skeletal wreck of a man. More plastic and scar tissue than skin. No doubt about it. I just killed Michael Jackson. We made our way to the underground passage leading to the communication towers. A sniper got the jump on us and shot Meryl. Colonel called and said to walk all the way back to the armory and get a sniper rifle. I was dumbstruck. 
Why would a weapon this crucial be so far away? Suddenly, a disembodied voice provided the answer. Lazy writing. I'm headed back from the armory with the sniper rifle. It's been 20 minutes. There's a 0.0000005% chance Meryl hasn't bled out by now. Journal, part four. I engaged in a relatively quick sniper battle with Sniper Wolf. The fight was made immensely easy with the pentazamine I found. I knew they helped control muscle spasms, but no one told me how amazing they would taste. All the fruit flavors are here. Grape, raspberry, green apple, orange, cherry. Cherry's my favorite. I know it's dangerous to overdose, but I couldn't help myself. I just swallowed five of them, and I'm feeling just fine. Before I could enter the communications tower, an assault squad got the drop on me with support from Sniper Wolf. I put six rounds of 7.62 in her. How is she still walking? Wolf then revealed that I had only killed Imposter Coyote, Decoy Octopus's twin sister, and equally useless to the plot. Good thing I'm getting paid for each dead Foxhound member. A soldier bonked me on the noggin, and I woke up on an improvised torture rack. They didn't put much effort into the hand restraints on this thing. While Liquid Snake was monologuing, I picked my nose twice and nobody even noticed. Also, he confirmed we were brothers or something. I couldn't really hear him. I was busy covering my ears just to mock him. Seriously, f*** this guy. Sniper Wolf was hanging in the periphery while Liquid rambled. She pulled an over-designed pill container from her pocket and swallowed some. I'm telling you, that pentazamine stuff is like a bag of lays. You can't eat just 20. I'm getting itchy just thinking about it. Liquid left me to Ocelot for an interrogation. I don't think he's ever done this before. He asked all the questions up front, shocked me three times, then sent me to my room. No follow-up questions. My guess? He went through all this just to see me shirtless. Next time, Ocelot, just to ask. I'm proud of my abs. While I was in the holding tank, Naomi called and said she could help ease my discomfort. She said to hold the controller against my arm. Once again, a video game controller appeared out of thin air. Naomi worked her nanomachine magic and it started vibrating. I definitely felt better, but I didn't hold the controller against my arm. I put it somewhere lower. Oh, yeah. Prison guard got a bad case of butt mud. When he ran off to relieve himself, Otacon stuck by the cell to offer some assistance. He gave me a bottle of ketchup and said I should know what to do with this. He's right, I did know. I drank the entire bottle of ketchup, and when the guard returned, I called his mom a bitch. He came in to ask why I would be so mean, and I punched him really hard. Thanks, Otacon. That was a brilliant plan. Uh, Snake? That wasn't exactly what I had in mind. Thanks, Otacon. Brilliant plan. After escaping the holding cell, I made yet another trip across the entire base, back to the communications tower. I tripped an alarm and the genome soldiers swarmed me. My only escape was up. I ran up all 27 flights of stairs on a stomach full of tomato condiment. I've never vomited so much in my entire life. Liquid was waiting for me at the top in a hind D. I think he was saying something profound to me, but he forgot to turn on the loudspeaker. So instead of a deep exchange, I just waited 45 seconds and yelled, What? Not gonna lie. Dying with that pompous ass gives me a sexual thrill. I've just shut down Liquid's chopper and humble brag to Otacon about it. Impressing nerds also gives me a sexual thrill. You better have gotten that elevator working.
Snape's Journal, Part 5. That traitorous weasel Otacon has been holding out on me. He said there were actually five of the stealth camo units made. I asked him where the other four were, and he said the soldiers in the elevator with me had them. Oh, Unfortunately, my natural talent for mass destruction kicked in, and I destroyed all four units while defending myself. <laughs> Just give me your f***ing stealth cam, Otacon. No one is trying to shoot you. On my way into the snowfield behind the communication towers, I was ambushed by Sniper Wolf. She questioned my manhood for allowing Meryl to be captured, so I did the manliest thing I could think of. I blew both her legs off with a Nikita missile. Looks like I got the leg up on Wolf, although she certainly stood her ground. Maybe I didn't put my best foot forward during our first meeting, but this could be just the kick I need to get the jump on Liquid. Snake, Wolf is already dead. You can stop mocking her now. Colonel, she shot Meryl. Multiple times. Mm, good point. Carry on then. No, no, the moment's lost. You ruined it. Otacon came to Wolf in her final moments and wept at her passing. Never one to pass up the opportunity to look like a tough, cool badass, I put my dirty hanky over her face, said them all cried out, and walked off into darkness. Truth is, I had blown my nose with it a couple of times in the last two hours, so it was spent. We're in Alaska. Naomi didn't give me a shot to prevent buggers. Master Miller called me on the way to the sub-basement beneath the Metal Gear hangar and revealed that Naomi may be a spy. That's impossible. She showed no remorse to the deaths of Anderson and Baker, said I was emotionally stunted and consumed with bloodlust, and oh yeah, I tried to kill her stepbrother, Gray Fox. There's no way she's a spy. I'm kidding. Of course she's the f***ing spy. Vulcan Raven was waiting for me in the sub-basement. I think he challenged me to an ear-pulling contest, but his birds were making a ton of noise and I couldn't really hear him. So I just waited 45 seconds and yelled, What? Vulcan accused me of recycling my jokes and shot me. Hey, you gotta play the hits. What unfolded between us was combat in its raw essence. Two powerful warriors trading blows on equal footing. A contest of physical, mental, and spiritual purity unseen in a millennia, free of ideologies and personal malice. Or I just put down 15 claymores and ran like a coward. Raven had a minigun, and I had a little pea shooter. I'm not stupid. Badly wounded, Raven gave me the final keycard to the Metal Gear hangar. He wanted to help me because Liquid had said some hurtful things to him and was being a total douchebag. Sounds on brand to me. I asked if he just wanted to switch sides then, and offered to patch him up. Raven thought about it for a second. Before I could answer, a lithe Asian man appeared from behind a crate and shot Raven dead. Then he told me to stop trying to rewrite the script, activated his own stealth camo, and ran off. Damn it! why does everyone have a stealth camo unit but me? Even Mantis was sporting one. I finally made it into the hangar where the Metal Gear was being stored. There it stood, tall and imposing. A monolith to scientific advancement, and a hubristic harbinger to mankind's downfall. And they built it to look like a f***ing duck. Look at those feet! They even gave this stupid thing a bill! I bet I could distract it with a few pieces of moldy bread. I called Otacon to ask if he had any idea how the PAL keys work. He hacked into Baker's computer and found that the key shape was affected by extreme temperatures. I corrected him and said it was pronounced temperature. Otacon typed something, my legs went numb, and I shit myself and collapsed on the ground. Hmm, why did I let Naomi inject me with those damn nanomachines? Liquid and Ocelot were in the control room just above the Metal Gear. Liquid is monologuing again. Jesus, this guy loves the sound of his own voice. He said he wants to dig in and turn this base into outer heaven, the independent military nation that Big Boss originally envisioned. We're on a frozen island in the middle of the Pacific, and there are zero kitchens on this base. I give them about a week before Outer Heaven becomes the Donner Party. Before I could sneak into the control room and use the PAL system to deactivate Metal Gear, Ocelot used his arm stump to draw his gun and shoot the PAL card out of my hand. Damn, that was cool. I spent the next 30 minutes searching the drainage ditch and found Bumpkiss. Finally, Master Miller called and said a rat probably ate it. That's ridiculous. The PAL card was made of an inorganic metallic compound and covered in bitterant. There's no way that a rodent would have eaten no sh a rat has it in his mouth. I finally have the key card, and Liquid has disappeared from the control room, which is totally not suspicious. I'm all set. Time to shut down a nuclear duck robot.
journal, part six. Well, f Turns out the PAL codes to arm the nuclear weapons were never entered. When I used the PAL key to deactivate the system, I ended up arming them myself. And this was a one-time use key, so I can't undo it. Bravo, Liquid. I guess I should have listened to your incessant yammering at least once. Liquid called and revealed that he can fake an American accent. Cool story, bro. I could strap on my Velcro shoes and identify colors and shapes as well. Then he said something about wearing sunglasses during all our previous conversations. My codec is an audio-only transmission system. How would I know what he was wearing when we talk? Oh no, there's a plot hole forming in the corner of the screen. Run! I chased down Liquid to confront him. I thought he was going to monologue again, but he decided to show off his dance skills instead. He started by performing a three-quarter to and layer right onto the guardrail. I answered by pulling off the sickest damn season of El Totumbi you've ever seen. He responded with an arms crossed front aerial. I wasn't about to get served, so I pulled off a pot of into a jeté en tonneau so fine it would blow your tits off. I wanted to continue our impromptu ballet dance off, but look what got into the Metal Gear's cockpit. Damn it, I was having fun! The Metal Gear roared to life in front of me. It was surprisingly spry for such a giant mech. Also surprising, Otacon gave it a tiny little dick gun. Not sure if this was another one of his character flaws, or perhaps he designed it from a personal perspective. That's not supposed to be me, Snake. My dick gun is huge. Er, my dick, rather. Big dick! Okay, Otacon. Whatever you say. Otacon has a baby dick. Great Fox appeared just as I finished destroying the radome. You know, the hard part. Thanks, dude. Awesome timing. Then he pulled me into a nook out of the Metal Gear sight lines to talk. First, he mentioned his fear of revealing to Naomi that he killed her parents. Understandable. Then he mentioned that he may have run over her pet cat fuzzballs. Not as relevant, but okay. He continued for another five minutes, naming various members of Naomi's family that he had wronged. We don't have time for this. By the time he had mentioned giving Naomi's second cousin herpes, I had to cut him off. Oh my god, I had kissed him at a party once. There's only so much you need to confess before dying. After several minutes of showy flips and shit, Gray Fox died, but not before extra super duper destroying the radon. I swear he did that just to steal my glory. I fired a half dozen high explosive missiles into the open cockpit of the Metal Gear and it shut down. Naturally, Liquid survived, because reasons. Or plot armor. I don't even know why I try sometimes. The Metal Gear exploded and the blast wave knocked me out. When I came to, I received a call from the Colonel. He said bombers were on the way to destroy Shadow Moses. I asked him to call them off, but before Campbell could do anything, he was sacked by the Secretary of Defense, Jim Hausman. Hausman hopped on the radio to announce his intention to kill me and Liquid. Just to review the ridiculous number of twists I've had to keep track of so far. Merrill is the Colonel's niece. The DARPA Chief and Arms Tech President both died because of exposure to me. Except the DARPA Chief was actually Decoy Octopus in disguise. Deep Throat was actually Gray Fox. Oh yeah, Gray Fox is still alive. Naomi was a spy. Naomi was a spy that infected me with the Fox Die virus that ended up killing Baker and Octopus. The Colonel knew about Fox Die. The Colonel knew about Fox Die and lied about it to me. Liquid and I don't just look alike, we're brothers. And our dad was Big Boss. Liquid killed Master Miller and pretended to be him to trick me. Like when an ocelot never got the PAL code from Anderson, so my dumbass armed the weapons for them. Naomi is still trying to kill me with Fox Die, but she didn't mean to, I guess. Gray Fox and Naomi are like step siblings, and yet Gray Fox killed Naomi's parents. Now the Secretary of Defense wants to kill both me and Liquid. Jesus, my head hurts. Let the bombs come. There's too many twists. Liquid took my shirt off. Totally not weird. And proceeded to launch into his longest monologue yet. I was still doing a mental tally of all the twists that had happened thus far, but I think he said we were super babies. I decided to test the theory out, and sure enough, I shot laser beams out of my eyes and cut Liquid's body in half. Screw your final fight, Liquid. I got a heat vision, bitch. I revived Meryl, who was laying unconscious on top of the Metal Gear with us. She came to, and was so grateful for the rescue that we had sex right there on top of the Metal Gear. <laughs> I mean, sure. She was probably a little lightheaded from the bullet wounds and lack of blood. So was I, to be honest. And yes, technically I never disarmed the bomb that Liquid set, so we were really playing with fire here. But I'm a dirty dog. She was willing and eager. That's why they call me Solid Snake Dog. No one calls you that, Snake. Shut up, nerd. You're just mad that I killed your pretend girlfriend. <laughs> Wolf. We wrapped up our quickie and headed for the exit. Meryl reminded me that we're in Alaska, and it's literally freezing outside. So I put on my ultra-high-tech, compression-warming, full-body stealth suit, supplemented by the anti-freezing peptides in my bloodstream. Meryl put on a single, sleeveless vest over her tank top. 
Not giving her my jacket when we get outside. Learn to lay her better. Errol hijacked a jeep, and we raced towards daylight. As soon as we reached the final mile-long corridor to the outside, Liquid appeared for one last exchange of gunfire. I'm fairly certain I shot him 150 to 200 times. In addition to the half-dozen stinger missiles, facial fistification, and a 50-foot fall. He should literally be a mound of hamburger meat by now. Die like normal humans, Liquid. Just as we broke out into the open air, Liquid's jeep collided with ours and we flipped over. I freed Meryl from the wreck, just in time for Liquid Meatwad to saunter up, point a gun at me, and keel off her dead from Fox Die. I mean, maybe I should have just hidden from him after the interrogation room. He was f***ed either way. The colonel called to let me know that he had counter-arrested Halsman, I guess. Yay for self-resolving conflicts. Even worse, he let Naomi go free. What were you thinking, Campbell? She's trying to kill me. Naomi then hopped on the call to add insult to injury. I asked when Fox Die was going to kill me, and she started getting ridiculously coy. And I quote, Naomi, Liquid died from Fox Die too. What about me? When am I gonna go? Oh, Snake, that's up to you. That's not how viruses work, Dr. Hunter. When? When will I die? Everybody dies when their time's up. That's not a real answer. Give me a f***ing window. It's up to you how you use the time you have, Liquid. Colonel, can you just shoot her for me, please? Unbelievable. Meryl and I made our way down a series of switchbacks to the tundra just below the base. A snowmobile was parked right where the colonel said to look. Meryl handed me a dirty rag she found on the ground nearby and called it a memento at the first time we met. I thanked her and handed her a wad of chewed up bubblegum. I said it was a memento of the time she got shot through her femoral artery and magically survived. Why are we handing each other trash? I started the snowmobile's engine, pretended not to hear Otacon calling out to us, Snake, and we rode off into the sunset. Sorry, dork. I have a whole lot of sex ahead of me. Snake, have you ever tried pegging? Okay, maybe this was a mistake. Hudson River, two years ago. We had classified intelligence that a new type of Metal Gear was scheduled for transport. The whole thing stank, but I've been walking over this bridge for three days waiting for the cargo ship, so the smell might be me.